It's always in the news. Cyber criminals attacking great organizations, wreaking havoc on the trust of their brand. We socialize cybersecurity for you to raise awareness. Interviewing leaders who built and protect great brands. We help talented people enter into this incredible field, and we share our research and blockbuster true cybercrime stories. This is Cybercrime Junkies. And now the show. All right. Well, welcome everybody to Cyber Crime Junkies. I am your host, David Morrow. And today we're going to talk about how social media can be a national security risk. We're going to talk about identity, prote- uh, identity protection in light of TikTok and explore potential TikTok connection to the Chinese government. Um, as we know, TikTok today has over 150 active monthly users uh, that uh, CEO uh, Xiao Chu uh, confirmed last week at the uh, um, congressional hearing. And it's there to highlight the platform's kind of vast and growing reach in the country amid renewed calls for its banning. So we're joined today by Darren Mott, former FBI agent in what is now considered the cyber uh, division, and he's an experienced cybercrime expert, a um, host of the Cyber Guy podcast, and we're excited to have him here. Darren, welcome, sir. Dave, thanks so much. I'd I'd throw counterintelligence in there, too, because I did both cyber and counterintelligence. And this is where TikTok really hits both of those those angles. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you've been very vocal about uh, national security dangers talked by, uh, you know, posed by TikTok. And uh, there's a, several social media influencers out there that are, you know, stateside and they're claiming there's a violation of free speech and banning it will either do no good or it violates uh, First Amendment rights or they'll be harmed economically by the ban. Um, let's let's get right into it. And let's let's address some of this. Um I'll take the third prong, and that's will they be harmed by the ban? Maybe temporarily, but there's a lot of other platforms out there, right? There's Instagram, Facebook, there's YouTube Shorts. YouTube does a great job, and 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 the Shorts program is is growing rapidly, as well as I mean, there used to be Vine, right? I remember Vine, which was like the precursor to TikTok. So the platform, personally, in my opinion, is dispensable for sure, but, um, and it's definitely replaceable, but more importantly, let's address the free speech aspect of it. Right. Well, I don't know what the free speech issue is really. I mean, sir, so you're going to get rid of TikTok. Okay. Let's, let's, let's say that we ban TikTok and it is constant. It's eliminated from everybody's devices. Are you telling me that there will not be another application that capitalism will rise up and fill that void and allow people to get in front of their cameras and pitch their bakeries and talk about their art and do their dance, something will fill that void. Like you, you even said, Instagram reels. I mean, sure, it's all by Facebook. You can say, well, uh-huh, I don't want to give my stuff to Facebook. Well, there is a huge, and I think here's the biggest problem. There's a huge difference between a U.S.-based company and a China-based company. And hopefully well, and I think that. that is the difference. And people make light of that, don't they? They, they, they say, yeah, but China, like it's a joke, right? But when mm-hmm. you think about it, um, do they not understand international relations? Like, like do exactly they not understand that. the trade war and espionage and things that are really happening in real life? Like that's the, the issue that I think a lot of people are just kind of glossing over and saying, oh, these people are just too uptight. They're upset that they're posting dance videos. No, that's not what's going on at all. Like there's nothing wrong with posting everything that is on TikTok, but post it on YouTube, YouTube shorts or Instagram reels or whatever. Right. And most people that post on TikTok are also doing that anyway. Like a lot of people will upload to multiple different platforms simultaneously. Um, what? go ahead. I mean, you, you've been, you call yourself like the, the town crier, which I always find entertaining about this, but you know, what is your position on TikTok and why do you, why do you feel that way? Um, you've got so decades of experience in this. So share that with us. Right. And this isn't really just TikTok. This is China. I mean, let, let's right. put those two things are in the same bucket, regardless of what anyone wants to say, they are the same thing. And in 1999, two Chinese generals wrote a book called unrestricted warfare. You can go download it and read it today if you Mm -hmm. want. And it will list out 
that China has a plan to become the hegemonic leader in the world. And they will do it by means that don't have to do with shooting guns and fly, flying airplanes and dropping bombs. They're if, looking to use political and social influence mechanisms to kind of, I mean, honestly, take over the world. And, you know, in 2003, Time Magazine list, wrote an article called Titan Rain, had to do with Chinese state-sponsored actors hacking into companies and stealing source code, intellectual property, all that stuff. It's all part of, it's all part of what they're trying to do. And, you know, th th this is just another extension of that. And those people who refuse to think that this is not an extension of that methodology are, you know, I, I can't convince them otherwise, but they've got their head in the sand and they, and they need to get it out. China is not our friends. Now, we'd like them to be sure we'd like every we'd like to be friendly with everybody. Let's be honest. But that's right. just not the, the of the world. Exactly. Because everybody it's wants to rule the world. <laughs> Right. And and, yeah. and and because of those motivations and, and, and those desires, we can't be who we are and and have them do what they want. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just inherent conflict. Um, let, me make, let, me, let me make a point to that real quick. So yeah. and I, this is a similar point that they make with the Israelis and the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Let's say China got rid of all their guns, all their missiles, all of their bad activity. Would we go in and take over China or would we just let China be China? We would let China be China, I would like to think. Yes. You know? um, but if we got rid of all of our stuff, is China going to let the U.S. be the U.S.? Or is China going to come in and say, OK, we can now take this over? They've already started to do that again, not through warfare, but by buying up, you know, media companies and, and, and you know, in, in influencing people through TikTok and, and things like that. This is just a small international piece. trade, right? Like right, violating, absolutely. violating copyright infringement, um, the mm -hmm. knockoff products. I mean, uh, it's it's an inherent, you know, multi trillion dollar issue that the U.S. faces sure. and, and, and not and not just the U.S., the U.K., as well as uh, Canada, right. all, I mean, all, you know, all, all of mass production companies are facing this. Right. And we're not so, their own, obviously, we're not their only target, but we we do have technology that rivals their own, which is why we're having this discussion with, well, it's not as bad as it's just the same as Facebook and all this other stuff. And it's it's it is not the same. That's I mean, exactly if, if, right. if, if China misuses your data and we could get into a whole thing on how they're using it to collate it with other data breaches like Equifax and right. the OPM Office of Personnel Management and Blue Cross Blue Shield and Marriott. All of those are attributed to Chinese actors stealing that information. Why do they care who's staying at the Marriott? Well, I, I think we've even had this conversation before in previous previous yeah. streams where they can collate it's, that information. Today and say, John works for Raytheon and I can go target him and get in, get him to spy for me. So this is, exactly. this is part of that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right because it's it's not just about that individual data breach, right? When we look at when we look at some of the past data breaches, you and I've had that conversation before, and it's listed in our in a in a prior episode of ours. And that is, um, uh, was it the Anthem breach or which 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 one Anthem, was it? Yes. Anthem, Anthem yeah. right? Anthem breach was not about the data. It was about being able to take those data points and correlate them so that they can identify who was working for the U.S. Secret Service and who was working for the U.S. government, right? Mm -hmm. And why right. is that, right? So they can target these people, offer them, uh, identify who they are, and then get to them to get them to spy. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, knowledge is power. Like, um, when we think about TikTok, it's not a... North American or European company that was formed, right? Um, it's it's owned by ByteDance, and um, let's talk about ByteDance for a little bit. What do we know about ByteDance? Um, from what I understand, there's several uh, from various reports. There's several people at the head of ByteDance that have a lot of ties to the CCP, the the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah, I, I would say most companies have that anyway because they are all somehow interlinked there with the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, much like, you know, you could argue Kaspersky is linked with the Russian FSB. Same thing. But, but you know, in China, it's everything is linked to the CCP in some way, shape or form. And they are mandated. And I, the, I, will, give, I will give the CEO of uh, TikTok credit for this because he did answer this in the affirmative that TikTok and ByteDance are have to follow the 2017 Chinese national intelligence data collection law that says right. if they ask you for data, you have to give it to them. He said, yeah, we have, we, we, we fall under that law. So, you know, you, sure. You can say, look, the U S can request data from your personal data from Facebook as well. Sure. They can, but they have to go through a court process to do it. And exactly. you can argue the NSA steal and all that, whatever, that's a different conversation. But if the U S misuses your personal data, 
the U.S. government, you have legal or, or Facebook or whoever, you have legal redress. There to are deal checks with and it. balances. There's an entire right. legal system here to address right. that, right? Not, you have right. You're not anybody in China. Yep. You have attorneys, you have organizations, you have civil rights groups, you have all of these organizations. You can't do that with China, right? So if if, right. if they do that, um, what is your recourse? There's none, mm -hmm. right? Um, and and there is a proclamation by them that, A, they're mandated by law to comply with the CCP, but there's a proclamation by the CCP that dates back more than 20 years that says our aim is to take over control. And so people forget about that or they just don't know about it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I think these conversations are really, really important to have. Um, let's talk about the congressional hearing a bit. Um what was your what what's your initial take on the hearing overall? Well, okay, so and this is you probably say this for all congressional hearings. And I I didn't watch every minute of the him talking. I was at work, but I had it on while I was doing some other stuff. So I listened to a whole lot of it. The problem is it's the format in which Congress does these things. Yeah, that five it minute is, format is really lousy, isn't it? Yeah. It's because you can't get very deep. As soon no. as you make your point and then you start mm -hmm. to go, then you have to yield and somebody else gets to take over. Right. And let's be honest, this is going to be an unpopular opinion to say on LinkedIn, but we do not send our best and brightest to Washington. Let's just start there. So, but, so they are not really necessarily skilled to be able to dig deep into the questions that need to be asked for, for what it does. Now, well, some, some of them did have some good questions, but like you said, in five minutes, they, they spent three and a half minutes pontificating on why TikTok was bad. Now, the problem is after the first four people said it, you could probably just say, I agree with my my uh, esteemed right. colleague and we're going to go with that. But here's my question. But they all had to say the same thing over again. Should be, you know, you're harming our kids and you should be changed. And you don't need blah, blah, all that kind of stuff. But I don't think they got to, I, I think they got a few zingers in, but I will say thumbs up to Bite Dance because he is a very charismatic person. Um, oh, yeah. Shen, Jet or Shao Chen, whatever his name is. Yeah. But he, but, and you know, Harvard educated, speaks well. Um, but he, <laughs> he was not very well prepared either because he let some zingers go. The one part about, about them spying, he goes, I don't think spying is the right word. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, what's the right word for you then? Uh, we just do surveillance. We do, we do unauthorized surveillance. Is that a better word for you? Right. I mean, so I, they got a, a few things came out that I think were interesting. Not enough to sway anybody's minds, clearly. If you had a, if you had a set up, a, a set up, um, idea of what TikTok was. It wasn't being changed uh, through that particular series of of, of uh, discussions. And nor do I think the media is poised to respond to re report to it accurately or follow up with it. Yeah. You know, I mean, and it, if he lied, if he lied, what are they going to do? Let's say he did lie. Let's say every he, he he lied to every question. He said everything they wanted to hear. I mean, I heard Project Texas enough time. It's a good thing there wasn't a drinking game going on because if you had to drink every time he said Project Texas, you'd have been drunk by the first hour and That's passed hilarious. out. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I I think it's it was an exercise that had to be had. Um, it, it created a day's worth of conversation. But are we talking about it today? I mean, yeah. you and I are. Is anybody else talking about it today? Really, it's kind of. You know, yeah, they're, they're, they're moving on until probably the next steps toward toward a potential ban. Right. I mean, right. that's that's the whole key is is what will actually come of it. And and for those that may not recall, there was an an, um, an, an initiative to ban TikTok under the Trump administration. And um, a lot of the restrictions that were put in place were not uh, uh, released under the new administration. And now the new administration has, has clearly has the same agenda, which is kind of interesting to see because it doesn't seem to be uh, partisan at all. No, um, sure. And that, I will say that was the one thing about that particular hearing is they were all un pretty unanimous on where they came down on it. No one said, hey, we support your right to operate and we don't have any fear for what you're doing. They all had issues. So, so good on them. I mean, there were some Congress folks that came out afterwards that weren't in that hearing that said stupid stuff, but I mean, that's, a, yeah. that's, that's I, I, a I mean, and, and the way that I look at it is what if roles were reversed? Like what if yes. the U S had created this app that was able to, without your knowledge, right in China, capture all of this data and we could see it and the US government can see it and all of this. Would China ban it? Of course they would. They would never allow it in the first place. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And and what if a US company created a app 
that did all of these things and had the potential for censorship and that had two versions of it, right? There's there's the clean educational STEM oriented version. And then for the masses, they have the soft porn dance video dangerous challenge version, right? Um, right. You know, uh, there's, there's, there's so many red flags that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite, it's, it, it's, it's quite obvious, right? To me anyway, um, that if the revol if the roles were reversed, there's no way that, uh, that, uh, we would tolerate it if it were an American company. There's no way that we would tolerate it, uh, that China would tolerate it, um, over there. Um, and he didn't, have, he didn't have a good answer to that one either. When they said, why is there a different application? He really didn't have a good answer to that. I didn't no, he I didn't. didn't. And let, let's, let's talk about that for those that may not have be aware of this, right? But there is a different version. The Chinese do not see TikTok in the method that we do. There's actually different codes. There's a different app. It's called something different there. Um, Dao Yeah, Nawe, right? But Dowin. Dowe. D-O-U. Yeah. Dowin. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and there it's, it's nothing like our TikTok. It is STEM education focused. It's, um, uh, it's motivating. It's, it's, it's got a, a lot of, uh, uh, social benefit. It's, it's, it's got a lot of professional development tied to it. Um, uh, why do you think that is? Oh, because well, part of it is they they don't want inf you know Western based influences to their to their kids because if you are under sixteen under eighteen I think or sixteen I forget the age group you only get to use it forty minutes a day anyway you have a forty mm -hmm. minute time limit on it for the whole day um, and you can't use it after ten p.m. at night so they're they're I mean like all their stuff they restrict a lot of activity there so part of that is to control their they're using that to control that's how they control their their populace absolutely so during the hearing uh, that happened last week. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about what access the CCP has to our data. And one of the congressmen talked about um, how there's various codes, right? There's the, there's the source code, and then there's the byte code, and that on certain parts of the code, um, there are, on the Chinese version, strict censorship devices and tools in place. Right, where they can control, mm -hmm. they can spread misinformation, they can control the uh, levels of information that, that that are being disseminated, and those same that same code is in the U.S. version. It's just turned off. Is is is, is that your understanding? I'll be honest. I did not see that part, so I can't. I, okay. I can't answer that one for you. But I would, I'm sure that is exactly the case. Because if you are in a certain age group, if you're under 16 and you sign up and you put your true age in within like 20 minutes, they've done research on this. You automatically start getting images and videos that re, you know are, are drug related, are related to transgenderism, all that kind of stuff that you know is socially. Question, socially driving, I guess, in our in our particular society. So they start forcing those things on that age group. And part of that is, I think, honestly, it's to influence that generation as they grow older, they will become, you know, why is China such a such a bad thing we need to worry about? Right. And so he was asked several times about what evidence is there that China has accessed the user data now. And he was he was pretty evasive. He his his version was in him being the CEO of TikTok. His version was um, they've never requested it, formally requested of me. I haven't personally given it over yeah. to them. And so, so what's the challenge with answering a question like that? I mean, it's probably true in the sense that there's no document that would ever come forward in the public that says, please remit all personal, private, uh, geographical location, GPS location, um, other information of all U.S. users, right? Um, of course, there's not going to be that. But uh, whether their access happens or not, that's not something we would ever even know. Right. right? Well, let's think about, how he, how, think about how he answered it. I have not been asked that. Right. I have not been asked that. He didn't say we have not been asked that. He said, I have not been asked that. That's a lawyer answer right there. So certainly yeah. I, I, I would wager my salary that they have sought for, gotten, and are using information from those TikTok servers for whatever 
reason they want. If they, them, I guarantee you they've gotten, I, I guarantee you they have gotten data from ByteDance because maybe they didn't ask TikTok. They went to ByteDance, say, hey, ByteDance, give us your TikTok data. And they're required by law, by Chinese law, by the 2017 Chinese law to, to hand it to them. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yep. um, so interesting. So let, let's look at one of the highlights of the, of the, um, before you get there, Dave, can, can, so Alexandra posted a question. I have the, your chat open. It says, Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah. So Arts. for first we right. have, uh, Scott Algenbaum, former FBI agent who said, uh, come on. He doesn't, like other, my, like, he doesn't like my answer to, uh, to, I'm sure the, uh, our, well, us not sending the breast and brightest to the to government, but anyway, anyway. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> um, and then, uh, Alexandria said, um, I mean, if you think about it, um, aren't some of our U S um, American businesses in China too, right? Where are those mm -hmm. servers located? And that was something that was addressed in the hearing. So let's get to that. And could the location of those servers allow potential for the CCP to access their data that communicates between the U S and China? Um, yes, so, I'd say yes. Yeah. Facebook is required. If China says we want our, we want data from your servers that is in here in China that you have to give it to us. Now I think they can get around it where if the server is not based in China, um, I, I'm sure there's a way around, I'm sure Facebook has to have thought about how do we isolate some of this data? So maybe they don't give it to, they don't give us based information. So I don't know the, the exact answer to that, but they are still beholding to that particular requirement. If you were doing business in China, you have to give them data if they ask for it. So what about their claim, um, TikTok's claim that we will move Project Texas? Let's talk about Project Texas. We will move the servers for TikTok to Texas, right? To the U.S. It'll be managed by Oracle or several other third-party monitoring companies, all based in the U.S. How, mm -hmm. how will that alleviate the concerns? I mean, the, the U.S. has mandated, the administration has mandated that China change ownership of it. And if they do, then they wouldn't have to comply with the 2017 law. China has refused, right? So the, they will still have that mandated Chinese law that if we ask, you still have to give it, give us everything. But if the, if the servers are located here in the U S to me, that makes no difference. But, but what are you, what are, what are your thoughts? What are, what are the, what are the listeners thoughts? Well, it's going to be, for me, it's going to depend on what the, requirements that are in the CFIUS document say. So CFIUS is the Committee for Foreign Investment of you, you in the U.S. or something like that. So if you want to um, purchase a U.S.-based company and you're a foreign company, you have to go through the CFIUS process that gets right. a bunch of federal agencies involved and there has to be an approval by DOJ and all that kind of stuff. My guess is on the other side, if they're going into this particular aspect, especially with TikTok, there would be a CFIUS review as well and there would be requirements placed on it. The problem really gets down to, you know, are they really going to give up a hundred percent interest in everything and move everything and not have back doors over? Who's, who's monitoring that? No one has time for it. Is the U S going to place designees at this new company hundred percent of the time watching all the data bits flow through? They can't, they're never going to do that. Of course not. And so China will figure out a way how to get through it. So, right. and then what'll happen, what'll happen is once it's determined that, Ooh, information from this project, Texas ended up in Beijing, the answer is going to be all oh, we, we got hacked. Someone right. Hacked us. How that happened? Yeah. Oh, shocking. Right. I mean, that, that's <laughs> right. Russia, Russia, right. Russia, Russia, Russia. Or, or, or they, they. I mean, they have the code written the way that it's written too, with with the censorship devices and with other aspects of it. So, um, I mean, all of those back doors would still be implemented even if the server sat in in on U.S. soil. Right. right? right. I mean, right. And so, I'm not, I'm not, I'll be honest with you, I'm not as concerned with that part of the code, the restriction stuff, because that honestly, that's a parental requirement. If you, if the parents right. aren't paying attention to what the kids are doing, you know, that's, that's on the parents. That's not on any country necessarily. Not to say that, you know, China's obviously making it easier for that to happen. So I just, you know, it's, that's, they've got some responsibility there, but at the end of the day, there's still a parental responsibility. Even if, if everything goes to Facebook or Instagram or, or YouTube short, some of these same issues are going to arise there. Um, so, but you know, parents have to be involved, but that's a, that's a different, different stream altogether. What about the claims that they would be able to manage the, um, user privacy and that they would be able to handle and protect the, uh, U S users. I mean, TikTok made a whole point of that and the Oracle representatives were there as legal counsel were, was there. Um, what do we, what, 
what's your take on that? Like that, that they'll be able to, to manage the user privacy. I mean, are they making a claim like they wouldn't be breached that they, that, that they're going to be able to, to manage their own content well, because they don't seem to be doing that good of a job so far. I'm, I'm I right. I don't know. Again, I don't know. I don't know how they, how they manage it. Are you going to, how, how often uh, are you going to audit that for compliance? Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, compliance audits are hard to do in just in general cybersecurity terms and able to prevent how a company may or may not be sending user data to a foreign adversary. Yeah. Who, who's trained to do that? I mean, there are people that are trained to do it, but are you going to send them, okay, every, this month you're going over to TikTok and, and are they going to show you what you need to see? I mean, it's not yeah, like- Is it going to be company specific? What if, like how many companies are out there that we would have to have federal officers involved in this? Right. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, so yeah. um, let, let, let me let, let me, me, let, me, me let me give you a quick analogy. I'm sorry, Dave. Let me give you a quick, quick analogy to this. Remember when yeah. IBM sold Lenovo? Yes. Okay, so that was in North Carolina. I was working in North Carolina for the bureau at the time, and we had conversations with them about selling about the, the sale of Lenovo. Um, and they said, well, you know, sure, there will be Chinese engineers here once we sell this this laptop part to Lenovo, but they won't have access to this part of the building. Okay. No one ever checked that that was the case. Um, right. and, and how many Lenovo computers are currently allowed in the U.S. government? Right. I don't think Good the U.S. Point. government's allowed to use Lenovo com computers. Right. Why not? If, if everything's up on board, board, what's the problem? But so, Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, and, and we've seen that with uh, uh, certain brands of TVs. Right. And certain other devices that are built in China and that have certain monitoring devices in there. Right. Now, they may say that those devices or those modules aren't turned on, but they but they can be remotely and and therefore they can be used as a mechanism to either siphon off information, monitor or disseminate false information. I mean, For Forbes had a great article about a year, year and a half ago. Um, that had to do with the super micro, the little thumbnail chip that was on the super micro boards right. that were periodically transmitting, allegedly, uh, information back to China. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that hard to set up a system within a U.S.-based server room that, you know, if you flick a switch, these encrypted servers that is actually transmitting data back to China gets turned off and you don't know they're there. You can't see them. You can't run a scan to find them. But when the when the auditors leave, we flick it back on and the, the data flows back, Who's, you know, so. It's not hard right. to get around. If, yep. if a 14-year-old if a year old kid can figure out how to get around the TikTok age restrictions, I'm pretty sure the country of China can figure out how to get around U.S.-based data passage restrictions through, a, through their server farm. Right. So there were a couple of zingers that kind of, in the hearing, that kind of got passed. And uh, I think that while they were prepared pretty much for his testimony on on the TikTok side, I don't think they were fully prepared for some of it. And uh, this was one that I thought was pretty emotionally charged and pretty good. So I just want to play it, and then let's kind of break it down and and take a look at it. Mr. Show, I'd like to direct your attention to the screen for a short video, if you don't mind. Mr. Show, that video was posted 41 days ago. As you can see, it is captioned me as F at the House Energy and Commerce Committee on March 23rd of this year. This video was posted before. Mr. Show, that video was posted 41 I'm having a days lot of, ago. I, see, I, let me turn it off because I was having some feedback. Were you having some feedback on that? On March 23rd of this year. Yeah, I am. I'm not sure why that. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Let me do some. Uh, Was still it getting coming it? through yours? Yeah, I don't know. A lot of, I, let me turn it off. Because <laughs> I was having some feedback. Were you having some feedback? Uh, live broadcast. Yeah, I am. I'm not sure why that. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Let me do some. Uh, now I'm getting. Oh, I know why. That's my. That's my fault. That was my fault because <laughs> I was bringing up LinkedIn to as you're doing. I was bringing up LinkedIn to see how many okay. people. I had a feeling. My yeah. Computer. Okay. Me, I'm sorry. All right, yep. let me go back because it was really, really poignant. So this hearing was publicly, was publicly noticed. noticed. I think that's a very interesting Mr. point. Mr. Show, I'd like to direct, direct your attention. I'm still hearing it twice, so hang on. To the screen to the for screen a short video, for a short if, you video if you don't mind. Mr. Show, 
Mr. Show. Show. That video, that was, video posted was posted 41 days, 41 ago. days as ago. As you can as see, you can it, is see it is captioned me as F at the House Energy and Commerce Committee on March 23rd of this year. This video was posted before this hearing was publicly noticed. I think that's a very interesting. So let's break mm -hmm. that. So um, when when we talk about uh, posts on TikTok, right, and whether they are dance videos or whether they are socially, like your, your bakery that's opening up, whatever, but this is clearly na naming somebody at that hearing. And uh, it's it's a clear threat, right, um, to people at the hearing. And it was up there for 41 days. And they didn't take it down. And it named the, the chairperson of the hearing itself. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that was pretty powerful cross-exam, in my opinion. Like, like yeah, that, I saw that one live. That was great. Yeah, I saw her yeah, do that. Because, and, uh, yeah, beca because in and she did say it well. Like when when I think about um, uh, some of the um, uh, elected officials that were trying to cross examine, they weren't doing a very dynamic job. It, it didn't seem very effective, right? Some of it is the structure of the five minutes, and some of it was just maybe their personal delivery. But when I saw this, I was like, that's a really good point, isn't it? Like, this is exactly about this hearing, about the chairperson of this hearing. And for 41 days, it was public. And they couldn't even, they didn't even know it. Because if they knew it, they would have taken it down. And they didn't even take it down. Um, like, how, like, what does that say about their filtering and their monitoring of content? I mean, it, it's, my, it's, it's really challenging, isn't it? Right. My guess is if it had been a similar type of video re, uh, regarding the People's Liberation Army and how the, they, the, they were bad. Immediately. Exactly right. It was right. It doesn't, right. That particular thing doesn't negatively impact China's China's needs or desires or goals. But So right. why take it down? No, I, I, ironically, after they showed it, they did take it down. Right. So someone was, someone was watching the hearing and said, oh, we should probably get rid of that one. Well, now, yeah, they, go they back found it. One? Right. They manually went and found it. Right. Yeah. So I, you know, I, 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 I thought that that was interesting. The other one, because we're ha maybe having some issues when, when we go and we replay these, um, there was the uh, one congressman that talked about the citizens lab report. So um, are you aware of, of what that report was about? Was that the one about the journalists? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the, the citizens lab report took a look at uh, uh TikTok and TikTok cited the Citizens Lab report. It basically, they brought it to the committee's attention, basically to say that uh, we've been exonerated, right? Like there's 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 nothing about our code or our platform that actually shows that. And the head of Citizens Lab actually came out and said, that's not what our report says at all, right? They restricted access to Citizens Lab so that they couldn't complete the entire assessment. Secondly, mm -hmm. what they did find is the code, right? What they did find is the code has the censorship components in it, like we talked about earlier, but that they're just not turned on, the U.S. version, right? And in China, they actually have them turned on. So having that capacity, I think, is evidence of the potential for a national security risk, clearly. But here's my question. Um, what is the risk? Like, what is it that China could do with if they turned on some of these censor censorship devices on the U.S. version mm -hmm. of TikTok? Like, if things don't change, what could China do? Like, I don't think anybody I, I don't see any discussion of that in the media. Like, I don't see people really talking about it. I see people reacting, claiming free speech and that things shouldn't get banned because generally, like we. I don't think anybody's in favor of banning things, right? Like just for the sake of banning them. Um, nobody's trying to ban Facebook or YouTube or anything like that, right? Um, and nobody's saying you can't post about your bakery or about dance videos. We're just saying don't don't leverage a application developed and owned by a group that's owned by affiliates of the CCP to do that, right? Use a different platform. Mm -hmm. um, well, what 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 is the risk? Meaning. Isn't there real risk here?
because like sure. China has made no qualms about it that they are going after Taiwan, right? Like, mm -hmm. and so there's a whole element of what could be spread, what misinformation could be shared in the U.S. over that. Um, isn't that a national security risk right there? Well, I'll give you a host of other issues. So let's say that, let's say we said, okay, tick, everybody, anybody can use TikTok anywhere they want to. So let's say servicemen, you know, our young 18-year-old, mm -hmm. 19-year-old, okay, so servicemen have it on their phone. They're deployed to an active theater of war and they have their phones with them. There are trackers that TikTok places on those devices along with the app that you can track location. So now we know where right. the we can do troop, they can do troop movement checks. Um, let's say that Congress people. Let me Congress stop you there. Have, Does YouTube yeah. have that? No. Does Instagram have that? No. Right. right. Does do, Does Facebook have that? No. So like the Chinese government can't like our adversary in international relations can't leverage that data to mm -hmm. to have a military advantage. But with this app, it does. Is that not a national security risk? Right? To me, it's that element itself is why there needs to be the discussion of of a ban. All right, I'll, get, I'll give you another another example. So let's say you have all of these teenagers now. Like I don't care. Have take all my data. Take all you want. Well, we know how good facial recognition obviously is now, and how easy it is to predict what people will look like in the future. Well, there's going to be a percentage of these teenagers that are using TikTok that are ultimately going to be in our U.S. intelligence community at some way in some way down the line. You know, when they're in their mid twenties, early thirties, when they realize they're not teenagers anymore and they want to be meaning, have meaningful lives and they join the they join the government and they're working let's say as a CIA covert officer overseas China has this data from now they know who these people are so you can't travel in covert name a, diff, a different name they're going to know that hey this is person is actually this person and we know that they work for the CIA or whatever that you know so there the, the names they don't match the so there's something going on here so it creates a it creates an intelligence gap there that we'll have down the down the road let's say they want to target well, that's they assuming th now let me stop you there that's assuming that our international adversary is playing a long game right they're doing things sure. now for the future hasn't china expressly said that they're playing a long game they have yes. it's exactly right. what they've said mm -hmm. right and so everybody's americans are so immediate gratification here and now this quarter this month what are we doing right the, the other parts of the world don't think like that. They think right. my next generation will be able to achieve this greater value, this greater level of control over the world by the data that we're mining now. Mm -hmm. And that data helps support their intelligence collection platform on the human side. So human intelligence is still big with China. They obviously have the use and need for human spies to steal information, as several FBI cases over the last year and year or so have shown when they've arrested actual people trading um, intellectual property to or providing it to the Chinese. But think about, let's say we know that, you know, there's there's the new the newest and best missile system is being developed by Lockheed. Let's use that as an example. And but the China doesn't know where it's being processed, but they know by scraping LinkedIn profiles and stuff that John Smith is working on this super secret new missile system because he gave up too much information or his wife or his kid said, hey, my dad's working on the secret project for Lockheed again because they're scraping all this data and collecting it. Mm -hmm. And he's got TikTok on his phone and he's taken his phone to work. They now may know the location of where that secret secret program is being run, and they can send human assets to try to get information, break into it, whatever. I mean, it's, these are extreme examples, granted. But again, like you said, it's a long game. They are looking at uh, how to use this data and weaponize it for their intelligence collection down the line. So that raises a good question, and that is when you download TikTok, and one of the counter arguments to suggesting a ban is, well, all everybody's doing it, right? Facebook is doing it, YouTube is doing it, link, you know, all, all the social media platforms are gathering up all this data, right? And there's the movie social, you know, um, social dilemma, et cetera. Okay, so understood that, but how does, when you download and you install TikTok on your phone, how is that different than downloading or installing Facebook, let's say. 
I mean, right. Well, I think most of most of Facebook and Instagram, they're trackers, and they they've come out and said we do install third party trackers that are used for advertising purposes for the most part, mm -hmm. if not all, for all parts. There are thir at least thirteen documented trackers that download with TikTok, and no, there's some of them that just don't know what they do why they don't know what they do. I, I don't know. Maybe they can't figure out exactly what it's on there for, but no one asked that question. You're like, right. Hey, can you please provide me with a listing of all the trackers and associated third-party apps that download with TikTok and exactly what they do? He would never have responded. I mean, there are plenty of things. I'll get back to you on that answer. Sure. Mm -hmm. I bet you there's, I'm sure he's going to get right back to them with all these answers, but um, I, I would like to know that information. And now they can come out and say, well, this is exactly what they do. And maybe they're no big deal. Who knows? I don't know. But I'm not going to trust them to say that they're harmless and meaningless and just exactly the same as Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And again, the, the same the same question right, has arisen is if if Facebook loads a third party tracker on your device that does something that violates your personal privacy without your consent, you have a legal you, recourse to deal with you that. You have legal recourse. You but have the ability to to bring suit. And trust me, there's a million lawyers that do and would love your case. Right. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that with TikTok. Right. I mean, right. that's that's one of the issues. If they choose to gather up, which we believe they probably are, but in common sense would probably dictate that they are. But let's just say you find out evidentially that that they that that they have done these things. What are you going to do? Like there's nothing you can do to TikTok. Mm -hmm. I mean that. Nope. I mean there's nothing you can do. You have no jurisdiction over over bike dance, um, and that is one. And and perhaps their thought that Project Texas could alleviate that, but it won't be if there's still Chinese ownership. So if there's still Chinese right. ownership, then Project Texas is really kind of still meaningless, right? Um, if they completely relinquish everything, um, they would basically have to start from scratch, right? Which is not no different than any other, which is really, in my opinion, no different than a ban at that point, sure. right? I mean, because, yeah, I mean, right? right. Let's say, my, my, where's my space today? It's gone. Something will fill the void. Something always right. fills the void. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and, and that, uh, the one senator that talked about the Citizens Labs report, they talked about, um, in those trackers and in those data collection, um, uh, third-party trackers, that uh, the findings by Citizens Lab is that it violated GDPR, okay? Mm. Uh, which, which that's an issue, okay? Yeah. Um, and that gets to the point of, at what point do you think the U.S. needs something like GDPR? I mean, it's yeah, a different we're, issue we're probably... than what we're, it's a different mm. separate issue. It's a whole separate episode and discussion but but that's really what we're getting to isn't it like where where we need protections we don't have and and i think one of the frustrations with people that watched that hearing was these are people that are bashing one ceo when there's several other bad social media companies that still track as well um albeit differently but they're really deflecting from the issue of we don't have a good privacy law in place yet. Right. And I think, you know, do we need a as restrictive as GDPR? Probably not. But we need something that at least shows we're serious about it and taking some actions right. to try to go down whatever that road is. Now, whether you can get enough, you know, get bipartisan support for that, I don't see why you couldn't. But it, if I guess it depends on who brings the, the legislation up. If it's the wrong legislator who supports, who, who signs on to it, then all these other ones won't sign on to it because that person signed on to it. And that's where our, our legal quagmire or our legislative quagmire is. But certainly we need some kind of privacy protection act. Now there, there are some, there's the CCPA, the child, child protection act and, yep. and things like that, that you could expand off of from a, from a, from a, you know, individual privacy perspective case. But you make an interesting point. If it violates GDPR, how come there's been no fine? I haven't seen a fine for TikTok for violation of GDPR. Right. I mean, I, I think it was it was being brought up uh, based on the uh, um, the movement over in the UK to ban TikTok. So I think as okay. as as we monitor that movement, um, what about other countries? There there have been other countries that have banned TikTok, aren't there? Isn't mm -hmm. uh, India? Has, India most famously. Yeah, I, I was going to say India is like a billion people there. Like, isn't that a pretty significant ban? Um, yeah. How are they getting their dance videos out? Right. Like, what are they doing? Like, I'm <laughs> right. 
There's, there's a, there's, I'm sure Bollywood was up in arms when this happened, but they still found a platform to, to have it resonate. I mean, we see a lot of it on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, et cetera. Right. So Mm -hmm. it's not like it's not replaceable. So I don't understand how it's a free speech argument. I, I, no, exactly. You're, you are correct. Um, would you give us this though? Like, would you acknowledge that the drastic method of banning anything is it's it needs to be taken seriously because we don't want to go down a slippery slope where Congress now believes that they are the moral police of society, even though they already are. And, and there's a thousand examples of how they do that. But um, it, it, it is something that needs a lot of research and negotiation before an absolute ban. Right. And, and I, yes. And I, but I don't think they'll, I'm not sure if they'll get to an absolute ban. If they do, it'd be interesting to see But again, it, it, once you create that precedent, what stops, what stops them, stops saying, them oh, from ban banning something else? Right. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hopefully there's the right people in place to say, well, look, this was a set, this was a special, special, they'd have to almost come up with a finding that says, look, we have, det- we have done enough research to determine. And part of this would require, well, here's what, here's what, it, here's how I would tell Byte Dance, if you don't want us to ban your application, this is what we need. We need full access to your entire source code from mm-hmm. line A to line Z. We need full access to all of the trackers that you install on a, a, a device. Plus, we need the ability to very easily disable those trackers if a user determines they don't want that tracker going on or whatever, or to, you know, to, to yeah. do those settings. So they have to come up with certain things that do this, this, and this. If they don't do it, then okay, we're going to not allow that to be used domestically. Now, I mean, they've we've gotten to where states and local governments have banned it from those devices. Right. So we've kind of started that easily, which is that's a lot easier but to do. But it's not affecting the private sector, correct? Right? It, no, it's it's no, not correct. it's not affecting the mm-hmm. the general public, and so it really will take a technical analysis and a technical assessment, right, to actually look at this and say, we need to determine this. Because if they do look at it and they find this is how China would have accessed in the past and we see no logs, no tra- no no evidence of it, et cetera, then at least they've gone through that process, right? right. But, mm-hmm. the, but based on what some of the people that have been looking at it have found is there's so many ties and there's so many threads linking back to the CCP that there's issues. And at least then they would have a technical basis for it, right? We're not banning a company. We're not banning your individual right to free speech. We're banning this technology, just like we do other technologies, right? right. I mean, there are mm-hmm. there are a whole host of things that this country bans on a regular basis because there are corruption within the device, for lack of a better phrase. Yeah, and I think we need to look looking forward. We need to be a little more do a little more due diligence on because China is going to come up with another way to do something similar to what right. TikTok is. So that well, we need to be able to someone needs to be looking. Okay, what is this app? Who owns it? Who's the ownership? What's it right. doing? And and you know it, it creates maybe that's you know it's more of a regulatory state that maybe we don't want as much of that either. But for this perspective, it's coming from if it's U.S. based. Follow these rules and you're good to go. But if it's coming from a foreign foreign entity that has hostile intent towards us, maybe we need to look right. at that a little more diligently than we did TikTok. I mean, TikTok just kind of showed up. It was a cool app. You were able to do dances with it and, and no one really paid much attention. And then it infiltrated like it has infiltrated. Um, and so I think... And, and one, I think one of the worst it, things I think they did is they didn't moderate it enough on a on a moral basis where you mm-hmm. had like the Kia boys break, like t- taking cars you had kids dying you had some suicides right. you had all these things that got a lot of bad press and then people started to really look at it right. i mean had they just kind of kept a little restriction on it and kept it cleaner it might have continued on as this huge social spying experiment and I think at the end of the day, let's say it get, did get banned, uh, someone something's going to fill the spot, and within oh, six yeah. months, no one's gonna, no one's going to care. No one's going to care that TikTok right. got banned. Remember TikTok? Yeah, it was cool, but I can do the same thing over here. Where was the public outcry when Vine 
I mean, the whole thing is yeah. everybody was doing exactly what they're doing on TikTok on Vine. And when mm -hmm. Vine ended, right, where was the public outcry and the free speech and the people marching on Washington? I didn't see that then. And, right. and I mean, why, this, why such support for a for a Chinese based app? I don't I don't I, get it, it. It's not an apples to apples comparison to Facebook and Apple and Meta and, and all that stuff. Right. It's not the same. And clearly, that's another discussion too, right? Like the way that Meta handled things with Cambridge Analytica, the way that some of these other uh, um, um, third party tracking and 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 um, access to your device that when you click that uh, user permission, you're not aware of, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's that's a bigger discussion. Right. We're when we when we're just talking about this one technology, this one application, um, uh, that's that discussion. But but people but you can't justify keeping that one technology because other bad actors are out there. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, and that's kind of what uh, Chu was doing as CEO. He's like, well, it's an industry standard. Well, it's an industry standard that we corrupt children. It's an industry standard that we allow suicides from our technology. Yeah. It's an industry standard. How, like, that's a different issue. Like, clearly, Congress was not prepared to deal with that today. That's why they kept drawing it back to, we're just talking about this technology, right? This mm -hmm. Chinese-based, owned and with ownership through the CCP, essentially, um, so where, where do we go from here? Like, well, I what think the best, I think the best approach, here's the approach. Here's the approach I take. We get Elon Musk to trade Twitter for TikTok with China. Let's just do that. How about that? That's my suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So, I mean, look there, when, when people accept the uh, user agreements and they accept the terms and conditions to download an app, nobody knows what that's doing in the background. Right. No. Like nobody, no knows. nobody knows. Nobody knows. I mean, um, you know, uh, an infamous engineer hacker, Chris Roberts, went and actually looked at some of the coding and some of the connections and some of the things like he 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 probably knows a lot more than most people, but most people will just install things and 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 go about their day. And the point is, is when it's found to to expose people that they were not expecting. There, There is still a general sense of privacy, even though we're using some of these apps, right? People believe that when I share something publicly online, that that's public, right? You can't complain. Once you post it, it's out there, right? But mm -hmm. I don't think many people know that once you install TikTok, they have a copy of all of your contacts. They have a copy of all of your, ev the keystrokes, everything that you're doing on your phone, they have a copy of. And I don't mm -hmm. think people really realize that. I don't think they really think that it can do that because I don't think they understand the technology. Right, when you copy and paste your password from your password keeper into your yeah. login screen, they're getting ca that capture in that too. Right, and again, playing the long game, China correlates data. There's information that they're getting from TikTok. There's information they're getting from other uh, data breaches that you've been involved in. Go to haveibeenpawned.com, plug in your emails. You'll find out several of the breaches. And, and what's always shocking when people do that is they find out that they're involved in these massive data breaches with groups they've never had an app for, they've never signed up with because their data was previously sold, right? Mm -hmm. And so yep. that's the risk that is is directly related to this. Well, good Absolutely. conversation. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's always fun. I, I always, I, I, I'm always, I'm, I've almost run out of TikTok things to say. I think. I think I've said about everything I can to everybody who wants to listen. But I'll continue to, I'll continue to be that town crier. I'm sure there'll be some things that pop up. Right, I'm sure there's going to be some follow up to this, mm -hmm. and the the uh, the new national security cybersecurity strategy that uh, the administration issued. I saw today that they plan on implementing that by June, which will be interesting to see what that means, right? And 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 what all is going to be coming of that. So you and, and I will have a lot more right. to, yeah. You there and I will have a. Order. Yeah, the executive order yesterday about um, spyware on government right. computers came out yesterday. Yeah. So there, there will be a lot of things for uh, you and I to always uh, banter about.
So sure. thank you so awesome. much for joining and thanks everybody for, uh, for, uh, chiming in and, uh, and watching and listening as well. So we will, uh, catch you on the next episode and thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate thanks, it. Hey, well, that's a wrap. Thank you for listening. Our next episode starts right now. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's free and download the podcast episodes available everywhere you get podcasts. To support our show and get exclusive pre-release episodes and bonus content, please subscribe to Cybercrime Junkies Prime. Link in the description and show notes. And thanks for being a Cybercrime Junkie.